Hey guys, welcome back to 31 Days of Pompoween. If you're new here, then welcome. My name is Pompberry, and this month I'm doing one new Halloween video every day, hence the name Pompoween. Today I'm doing something that has been highly requested throughout the years. I always kept putting it off because I always thought it was too simple of a look, but you guys kept requesting it. And so today I'm doing San from Princess Mononoke. If you've never watched Princess Mononoke, it is a must watch. Stop what you're doing right now. Stop this video. Go rent My Neighbor Totoro and Spirit It Away and Ponyo and Kiki's Delivery Service and all of Miyazaki's movies. But not just Miyazaki, Ghibli has some amazing non-Miyazaki movies as well. Go watch them. Go watch all of them. All joking aside, as I said, today's look is going to be very simple, but I'm going to be teaching you some really interesting techniques. If you don't know the character, she lives and runs around in the forest all day, every day, and so she obviously doesn't wear any makeup. So for the face, I'm gonna do a no makeup makeup type of look, but I am gonna zhuzh it up a little bit, but she does have some markings on her face, and then we're also going to play around with a bit of blood. I also want to make her seem a little bit dirty because she is in the forest all day, every day. So if you wanna learn some tips and tricks then keep on watching. But before I begin, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. This month there will be a lot of good things and there have been a lot of good things already, so if you haven't watched any of my other Halloween videos, you can click up here to watch the playlist. I also did 31 Days of Halloween last year and there were some really awesome looks in that, so that's worth checking out as well. All right, so let's just jump right in. My forehead is very shiny. As I said, I want a very fresh, no makeup look. And so to start, I'm going to be priming my face with the NYX Bear With Me Primer. This is an aloe vera based primer. It really is just kind of like the texture of aloe vera gel. This is a really fresh feeling primer and also very hydrating without being too sticky or oily at all. Now, sand doesn't actually have any freckles, but because I want to give the impression of super fresh skin, like no foundation on my face, I'm gonna go in and draw some freckles before I do my foundation. I just want them peeking through very lightly. And for that, I'm using the NYX eyebrow marker in the color medium. I believe this has been discontinued, but you can use any sort of eyebrow marker. And I'm just gonna do that kind of concentrating around my nose area, just where you naturally get freckles. And I'm doing this before foundation, before anything, because I want them to look as natural as possible. So I want to pretend as if I naturally have these freckles. You don't have to worry about this area too much because it will get covered up by the markings. I will concentrate quite a bit on the nose area. And all I'm doing is I'm drawing on irregular little marks and then patting them out with my finger to kind of blur them out. You want to make different sizes and different shapes. Freckles are not round. I want to go close to the eyes too. You can leave some without padding so that they appear darker. Now, when you're doing a no makeup makeup look, the most important thing is using the least amount of products on your skin as possible. So to do that, because I do have to conceal some blemishes like this guy over here, I'm going to color correct. That will allow me to use less concealer, less foundation to cover it up. And for that, I'm going in with the LA Girl Pro Conceal in the color Yellow Corrector. I use that for all my blemishes and under my eyes. I've talked about this guy on my channel a lot, so if you're new here and you don't know why I use yellow, basically yellow is a lot easier to blend into the skin and to make it look natural, and it does cover up redness and any sort of blue or purple discoloration. It helps take care of that. And you can see it instantly. And I'm using just a very thin layer of this, but this is going to allow me to use less concealer. And so I'll have a more natural looking end result to my makeup. You see it covers up redness really well. I don't like green color corrector because I find it very hard to blend into the skin and to make it look natural. So yellow is the way to go. And not pale yellow, actual yellow. Because I want a light natural coverage, I'm going in with a BB cream. I'm using the Pure Leaf one. I really really like this for like my day-to-day -day makeup. It's got SPF in it and all that good stuff. So I'm just taking a little bit on a beauty blender and I'm just going to concentrate it where I need it the most. You don't necessarily have to apply it to your entire face. 
If you've got clear, good skin with no discoloration, then show it off. The more natural skin you have peeking through, the better. So I'm gonna concentrate this here where I have a lot of kind of scarring from breakouts. And I have a very uneven skin tone around my mouth. So that's where I typically concentrate my foundation. Also, gonna add a little bit here. Now I'm going to do my nose and I'm going to just lightly cover up those freckles that I did. As I said, I just want them kind of peeking through the foundation to make them look even more natural. I don't want these looking like fake freckles at all. So if I only get a few peeking through, that's totally fine. But you can see that really helps make things look a little bit more natural. Now for concealing, I'm only going to do some very, very minimal concealing with the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer. I'm using the light warm just a little bit under the darkness in my eyes. And then wherever I need a little bit more coverage. Then I'm just blending that out with my Beauty Blender. And I'm actually not even going to bring my concealer all the way to my bottom lash line. I typically do, but for this, I kind of want to keep the natural darkness around my eyes. That'll help with the eye look without having to add too much eyeshadow. So I'm going to use the color that's already there on my lash line. Now to give a little bit of a sun-kissed look, I'm going in with the Milk Makeup Matte Bronzer in the color Baked. And I'm going to take that. I typically apply this with my fingers, but today I'm going to go for a brush because why not? And I'm going to apply that where the sun naturally hits. So I'm applying this pretty much on my cheekbone. But I'm also bringing it down. I'm not using this to contour. I'm using this because she is out in the sun all day every day and so she would have kind of a natural glow from just being out in the sun. You can see this just gives a really natural finish to the skin. I'm also gonna apply that on to my nose, kind of hitting the sides of my nose, ridge, a little bit on the chin as well, and under the nose. I'm applying this kind of where I would apply blush just to give a nice natural sun-kissed look. Okay, I tweaked the white balance a bit because I was looking a little bit washed out, so I think you can see it better now. Now to further add to that natural glowy look, I'm going to add a little bit of blush. I don't want her to be super rosy, but everyone does have a natural rosiness about them. So I'm using a cream blush that really matches my natural flush. This one is the Kaja, I think it's called Cheeky Stamp. There's no name on it in the color Koi. And it's the cutest thing. It's got a little heart-shaped stamp. And then the actual blush is down here. But I'm just going to use that same brush. I'm just going to load it on and stipple it on just to where you would naturally be rosy. So kind of hitting the same spot where I used the bronzer, but then also bringing it down onto the apples of the cheeks. You can see that just gives the slightest natural looking flush. You could get away with this with people thinking that you're not wearing any makeup because it's just very, very sheer light layers. I'm also bringing that blush kind of where I applied my concealer under my eye, just very slightly. It really helps to marry everything together. A little bit on the chin and a little bit on the nose. And there you go, that's pretty much the skin done. You can stop here if you want. I'm gonna do a tiny bit of contouring and I'm using the Milk Makeup Matte Bronzer, but this time in the shade Blaze. This is a slightly darker one and I'm gonna take that just on the edge of my brush just so I can do a little bit of sculpting on my cheekbones. I feel like Sun has a very kind of angular face and that's why I'm contouring a little bit with just the slightest amount. And I'm using all cream products because they give the most natural finish to the skin. You can't get the same effect with powder products. They're not going to look as natural and as seamless on the skin. I go in with my fingers just to concentrate that color where I want it. And then I am going to do a little bit of a concentrated contour around my nose. This is just personal preference. I just like contouring my nose. You can totally skip this step. She has a very thin and straight nose. So I am just adding to the illusion that my nose is slightly thinner, 
slightly straighter. Contouring right here at the start of the bridge also really helps to elongate the nose in a really natural way. You just blend that kind of inwards and it just looks like a really natural shadow. Now I'm going to do a little bit of powdering just because I get oily in my t-zone and I'm going to be using the Milk Makeup Blur and Set Translucent Powder in the color Light. And the reason I like this powder for natural looks like this is because it isn't super mattifying. You still get a little bit of a natural glow from the skin so it doesn't completely take away that natural glow. It just sets everything in place can see it especially here in my forehead it's mattifying it but there's still a natural kind of sheen to it that's what I want bare minimal powder just so that the cream products don't move in the areas where they're likely to crease but I do want to mattify my forehead specifically a little bit more because you saw it gets very shiny so I'm gonna go in with the makeup forever matte velvet skin powder foundation this one is really matte and I'm just gonna use that on my forehead to really mattify it see look at the difference with and without like you can see exactly where I applied it because it is completely mattifying. Like this powder foundation is insane. Like I've never seen something that mattifies this much. It's kind of crazy. But I'm only going to use that on my forehead because I know that I get very shiny. And I don't want to look like a grease ball by the end of this tutorial. She has very thin and very straight brows, and as you can see, mine are bleached. So I'm going to go in with the NYX Eyebrow Gel in the color Brunette. This is basically a brow pomade in a tube, so I'm going to take that on a little angled brush so that I can start shaping out my brows. She kind of has that 90s brow look going on, but I really don't want to have a 90s brow, but I am probably going to make it thinner than my natural brow. A brow can really make or break a character. San is always serious and always very stern, so it makes sense that she has a very straight brow because it's a trait that helps to add to her character and her overall mood. Generally, evil characters have really arched brows. You can take a look at the Disney villains. They all have really arched, pointed brows. Meanwhile, the princesses have really rounded brows because that gives a more innocent and sweet look because it mimics a child's brow. So with San, I do want to keep it very straight and very thin because it does help to add to that very serious look. She's not playful. She's not super happy. This is the overall shape. I'm going to go ahead and do the other one. Brows are done, bangs are down. Now, as I said, because she is in the forest all the time, I want to make her seem a little bit dirty. And you can do that a million different ways. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to do that with water-activated face paint. And I'm going to be using my little wolf palette. I'm going to be using the brown and the black. And all you're going to need is a little cosmetic sponge. It can be latex or non-latex, doesn't really matter. And what you're going to do is you're going to pull it apart to create a textured sponge. Now you don't want any straight edges, so you really wanna pick at these straight edges. You just wanna create a rounded texture sponge. Make sure you get rid of all the kind of straight edges and corners. And what I like to do is I have a little dropper bottle with water and I'm going to add water to my face paints, but I wanna really dilute them. I don't want the color to be that strong. So I'm also gonna put some water onto the little lid that I'm gonna use as a palette. And I'm gonna dip my sponge into the water first. I'm gonna start with the brown. I'm gonna dip into it, and then I'm going to take the excess off on the back of my hand. This is way too strong. So I'm going to tap it until it's very light, and then I can start stamping it on my face. And you want to hit the areas where she'd be most likely to be dirty. So say around the chin, around the perimeter of the face, anywhere she'd lay her head, maybe on the dirt, possibly on her nose if she were to wipe her nose with her dirty hand. And then I dipped into the black a little bit, but that is way too strong. So I'm dipping again into the brown to just mix the brown and the black together so that I get a more cool toned brown and I'm just taking the excess off on the back of my hand and then again if it's too strong you can go back in and pat with your finger to remove the excess. Don't have to go crazy with the dirt like that's a little too much I think even 
but you do want it to be kind of noticeable. And you can also use it to help with contouring. As you can tell, I'm kind of following the contour of my nose. I'm not applying any down the center of the bridge of the nose. And you can do the same along your cheeks. You can apply the dirt just along your contour areas. I'm gonna apply that to my chin as well. You can use it to cover up blemishes, like I'm applying it right over that big old pimple I have right there. I'm also applying it around my eyes a little bit. And then you can always apply it to the neck. That's where she'd be most likely to get really dirty is around like the neck area because usually you sweat and then dirt catches on to that sweat and just kind of stays in the creases of your body. It's really gross, but that's what happens. And when you're applying dirt like this, you have to think about that kind of stuff. You can't just apply it willy-nilly to wherever you want in the face it kind of has to make sense, you know? So usually necks gather a lot of dirt, and so you can go a little bit more crazy along the neck. Now that I'm all dirty, I'm gonna move on to the eyes, and the eyes are gonna be super minimal. I do wanna open them up, so I'm gonna go in with the Milk Longwear Gel Liner in the color BCC. It's a pale beige, and this is just going to help open up my eyes. And I generally like to do this with every kind of character look that I do. It just helps to bring focus to the eyes in a pretty discreet way. Like you can tell that opens up the eyes a lot, but it still looks pretty natural. So I definitely want to do something like this when the makeup is this minimal. Anything that I can do to draw attention to my features is a good idea. Now I actually wanna take those two bronzers that I used on my face and use it around my eyes. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the lightest one and I'm just gonna take that on my finger and just kind of apply it all over my lid, just as a wash of color. Bring it down. You don't have to be super precise about this. I just kind of want to intensify the darkness around my eyes, but in a controlled way. And then I'm gonna take a pencil brush and I'm gonna take the darkest color, Blaze, and I'm just gonna pick it up on my little pencil brush and I'm gonna concentrate it close to my lash line. This just kind of creates a natural shadow near the eyes. But it also blends into what you've got going on on your face because you've used these colors on other parts of your face as well. So I'm basically just kind of intensifying my natural darkness around my eyes. Now just to intensify that lash line a little bit more, I'm going to take the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in the color Endless Cacao. It's a really cool tone brown, that's why I'm using it. I want to keep it pretty natural. And by using cool tones, you can mimic the natural color of the shadows on your face, if that makes sense. And I'm just applying that really close to my lash line and blending it out just working it into the roots of my lashes. And then same thing along the top lash, you just wanna really work it in to the roots and blend it out slightly. Now this doesn't have to be anything precise. It's even better if it's a little messy because of the character. You can see that just helps to define the lash line a little bit without going too crazy with the makeup. It still looks pretty natural. Normally I would say no mascara, but because I'm doing this for photo and video, it's always better when you have a little bit of something on your lashes. It really helps to bring out the eyes. And so I'm gonna go in with a brown mascara because I still do want it to be really, really discreet. So I'm using the CoverGirl Flourish by Lash Blast. And this one does give a really natural finish to the lashes. It doesn't look like you're wearing much. But another reason I am applying mascara is because the way the character is drawn, you can see her lashes. So there is a slight emphasis on her lashes, and so I figured I should emphasize mine a little bit as well. You can see that just adds a little something. It's not crazy. Like I would never put on a black mascara or falsies with this look, but this does help to frame the eyes a little bit better. But I mean, if you want to go for a glam sand, then by all means, throw on a pair of lashes, some mascara, add glitter if you want. I don't know. The sky's the limit. Now, if you don't want to do any of the markings or anything, then this is it. You're finished. You're done. This is a no makeup makeup look with some dirt. But 
I'm going to go one or two steps further and now I'm gonna draw the markings on her face. She has three triangular marks, two right below her eyes and then one on her forehead. And the easiest way to draw something that's just like a flat shape is using something like a water activated face paint. Unfortunately, I don't have one that's the right color to do that. I just have a bright red one. I don't have a dark red and I hate mixing face paints. So instead, what I'm gonna be using today is a liquid to matte lipstick. I'm gonna be using the NYX Liquid Suede Cream Lipstick in the color Cherry Skies. And I'm just taking some on the back of my hand and I'm gonna use a fine tip paintbrush just to map out the shape before I go in and paint it all in. Basically the marking starts below her eyes and goes down past her bottom lip. So it's pretty long. A lot of people make it too wide and it covers up the entire cheek. It's a pretty narrow triangle and it comes to about here on the sides of her lips. I'm gonna mark the key points of the shape. So I know it can't surpass this this way and it starts about right here now i'm going to do the same on the other side because i want them to be as symmetrical as humanly possible that one's already a little bit too high so i have to fix this one now i'm going to start roughly sketching the shape you can always make the shape bigger so i want to start really small and kind of expanding as i go as i see fit if you start out by drawing a huge triangle and then you mess up and you have to like fix it and it becomes even bigger kind of like when you do your eyeliner you know when you want to fix something and then you make it bigger and then bigger and then bigger that's the same thing with drawing a shape like this you really want to start small so that if you have to fix it and make it bigger it's okay it still won't be huge I like where it's ending right now and I like that it's really tapered so I'm gonna leave the ends as is and I'm gonna start building the shape up from there now that I've got the general shape I can fill it in using the actual wand and blending it out with a lip brush and you want to make sure it's all one even color you don't want it to be patchy so make sure that you're spreading out the product evenly. You might have to do more than one layer to get it to be super even. I find that it helps to let it dry down a little bit before you go and blend it out so that it's less patchy. Now that these two are done, I'm going to go ahead and do the one on my forehead. And that one has to be smack in the middle and it ends kind of right above where the eyebrows begin. So I'd say right there. It's about that tall. I'm just drawing a T kind of get myself situated and then I can draw the triangle from there. And this one is more like a true triangle. The ones on the cheeks are curved. This one is just a triangle. Now this could be it for you. You can end it right here. Just add a little bit of lip balm and you're good to go. Get your accessories, get your costume on and you're done. Or you could be like me and you could add blood. I've gone ahead and put on my accessories and wardrobe just to show you what it looks like with no blood. And you can just apply some lip balm if you want. I'm going to go ahead and apply a little bit of lip liner just to define my lip shape a little bit more just to make it a little bit cuter. So I'm going to go ahead and use the NYX Slide On Glide On Pencil in the color Nude Suede Shoes. And this one is very similar to my own natural lip color. I just want to kind of overline a little bit to create that cutesy little lip shape I like to do where basically you just overline the top and the very outer corners and it makes you look super super pouty. And then I also overline the bottom a tiny bit. But as you can see, this is really, really close to my own natural lip tone. So I'm going to take a slightly darker lip pencil. This is in the color Need Me. And I'm going to do the outline because it just helps to add to the illusion of a new lip line. But I'm going to make sure to blend those two together before it sets. And then I'm kind of filling in these outer corners with the darker color. It really helps to add to the effect. I also like to darken this inner portion of my upper lip and my natural cupid's bow a little bit. I'm kind of doing the same on the bottom. Also darkening the inside of my lower lip and just kind of bringing it down to create that kind of pillowy effect. 
And then I just want to add a little bit of a healthy sheen to it, so I'm using the Milk Makeup Kush Lip Balm in the color Nug. This one's pretty similar to my natural lip shade as well. It tends more peach than pink. I'm just going to apply that, give a nice little healthy shine because these lip liners are very drying. And then one thing I'm going to do to complete the lips is I'm going to take my bronzer and I'm going to take that same pencil brush I used on my eyes and I'm just going to apply some of the bronzer to the outer corners of my lips to create that little shadow right there. You guys know I love doing this little shading around the lips and it just gives a cute little pouty effect really. I'm also going to do it under the bottom lip. That was using the lightest shade. Now I'm going to take a little bit of the darker bronzer and just intensify that. I'm taking it onto my lips so that it really just blends everything seamlessly. So that's it for San with no blood on. The earrings, I just cut them out of foam. The headband is just a little ribbon that I put a flat back pearl on it. And that's it. And then this is like a little faux fur shawl. You can make the hair as messy as you like as well. Her hair is pretty controlled for someone who's just riding around the forest all the time. It's pretty, it's pretty tame. But you can mess it up a little bit. She also has some like little sneaky pieces out from under the headband. I think that helps to add a little bit of texture, a little bit of realness to the character to just have some loose pieces like that over the headband as well. But now, onto the blood. I'm gonna take this off because it's really warm in here. So, for the blood. I'm gonna be using two types today. When you're applying blood on or around your mouth, you want to make sure that it is mouth safe blood. Please, please, please make sure that it is safe for you to put on and around and in your mouth if you're going to do that. If you don't have any mouth safe blood, I have a really quick tutorial on how to make some that you can watch by clicking up here. And that's what I'm gonna be using today. I made this little mixture, whoa, should not have tipped it over. Ah, now it's all over everything. Anyway, why am I going to be using two types of blood? I'm gonna be using this one directly on my mouth because it is mouth safe. And I'm gonna be using some pre-made blood outside of my mouth area because I think this looks better on the skin. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of this homemade blood on my lips. Let me zoom you in. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some on and you'll see what it does. So as soon as it goes on, I just wait a little bit and it kind of clumps up together. It doesn't stay spread. So if I try to just like spread it all over my lips, you'll see that it doesn't stay that way. It immediately moves and clumps together. And that's because of the corn syrup. I think it's just the way that the sugar crystals behave. And so I can't really use it to coat my skin the way I want to. But I just wanted to make sure I had it for my immediate mouth area. But see how it like beads up? I really don't like the way that looks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some Kryolan FX blood in the color dark. I'm just gonna, I don't know if I need to give this a shake, but I'm going to anyway. And I'm going to also apply this with a Q-tip. I'm just going to dip it in here and then I can spread this on my skin. And if you don't know why I'm doing this, you're like, why is she putting blood all over her face? There's a pretty iconic scene where San gets blood on her face and I'm not gonna give away too much, but it's pretty iconic. So now I got a little blood mustache, yay. So I'm just trying to replicate that scene where she just kind of has blood all over. You can also use your fingers to kind of help. She has these like two little trails going down. She has some on her chin and it goes past her little triangles. So you can see with your finger, you can help get these really irregular patterns that you really want to get to make it look more realistic. But because this blood is not mouth safe, I am avoiding my immediate lip area, as you can tell. She also has some like on her nose and stuff. She has some on her neck and on her collarbone. It's just everywhere. She also has some like on this cheek. I think she's just like hurt or something, but I'll add a little bit there. Cause why not? I'm gonna cover myself in blood anyway. 
Okay, that's pretty freaking bloody. Now that's what my fingers look like. And then I'm going to take my homemade blood and try to get as much on my lips, try to get it to stay, which I don't think I can. Oh, the cotton from the uh, Q-tip is coming off and it's leaving like little bloody chunks on my lips. It's pretty gross. See, there's a little chunk right there. That's pretty gross, but I must say, definitely adds to the overall effect. See how it just like separates? If any of you know how to stop corn syrup from doing that, please let me know because it would be very useful for when I make blood. That's pretty dope. I'm gonna go wash my hands and then I will come show you the finished look. You can also put some blood in your mouth for an added effect like this and it looks crazy. So let's do that, cause why not? But that's it. This is the finished bloody look. Blood obviously is optional, but I think it makes it more appropriate for Halloween. So yeah, I really hope you guys liked this video. It was really fun to do. You guys have been requesting this for such a long time and I'm glad I finally did it. I love San, I love Princess Mononoke. This is a really, really simple look, especially if you already have brown hair. You can just do like the face paint portion and that's it and you're good to go. So yeah, super easy, super simple costume that you can also wear to anime conventions if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, now I'm just having to taste this blood and it is so sweet. So yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see some behind the scenes and some exclusive videos, then head on over to my Patreon. I have a bunch of Halloween extras over there, so be sure to check that out. All month long, I'm going to be posting videos about how I make my accessories, how I style my wigs, etc. Be sure to check it out. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you to all my patrons who support me. And don't forget to tune in tomorrow for another Halloween tutorial. I'll see you then. Bye!